So, uh, hi everybody. Uh, how are you all doing? Welcome to uh, the Healing Finance Grace Stream. Uh, that the topic came up last Sunday when we did this, uh, talking about the second chakra. We will be talking a little bit about the second chakra today. Um, but towards the end of the last one that we did, we started talking about finances a little bit. And it was just obvious that you all had interest in um, the topic, <laughs> because who doesn't? Um, so I just want to start this off. I, we're going to do a prayer and all of that in a little bit. But I wanted to start off really by saying that this is not about manifesting money. I even put that on the public stuff that I circulated for this. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the law of attraction, about the spiritual ego, about the second chakra, and about the solar plexus chakra too. Probably the root as well. <laughs> so, uh, look, money is something we all have to deal with. Uh, I've been teaching prosperity and abundance work since the 90s <clears throat> and yet I'm still not a millionaire I may well be a thousandaire <laughs> but you know after taxes it's just a tired feeling really uh, so uh, so that being said you know it, it's one of those things in the reality of this world that we have to deal with on a daily basis and I know from my own personal experience, it seems that no matter how hard I work, that if I don't do the healing around my own financial shit, and we'll track that a little bit, not my own personally, but we're going to go chakra by chakra, at least uh, the first three working from the root up, you're going to get that a lot of the stuff that you have around money, the wounds in particular, shame, guilt, blame, anger, all that stuff, uh, you know, because we've been financially abused and we've abused finances, all that kind of stuff, that you're going to find that the energetic reality of it is that you incarnated into a time on planet Earth where money became like a god. Now, money was not always like a god. To keep in mind that money is a means of exchange, right? Remember the barter system? I know people still do it today to an extent, and you know, that's fine. I'll barter every now and again, like a massage for a, a reading. I'll do that. That's an equal exchange of energy. But, you know, if you own chickens and the people next door had potatoes, how many chickens are you going to give them to get a potato, right? So we came up with this uh, system, a numeric system, saying that we're just going to use this because it's in front of me, that this means a certain thing. This means a certain amount of, and here's the keyword, worth, right? This is worth something. Now, we're no longer on the gold standard. This actually used to mean there was a piece of gold, or a little fleck of it, glitter, glitter bomb, uh, but it has not been that way for a long time. And so it has become a real psychological clusterfuck with money. Um, and, you know, if you've been doing the law of attraction stuff, I, I like to pick on the movie The Secret and the book because I was into it at the time because I was a little shocked how everybody thought it was a secret. So I was like, all right, well, let's see if they got anything new in it. Maybe some new processes, vision boards and all of that. But uh, universal law supports the divine plan. And we really need to talk about the divine plan today quite a bit. So let's look at the chakra system. And then we're going to say prayer. The first three chakras, the root, the sacrum, and the solar plexus are where energy from the outside world comes in. Uh, the other four, the heart, the, thir the third eye, and the crown, are what Carolyn Mace calls the interior alchemical laboratory. I fucking love that. It is the psychological realm. Uh, and then the eighth chakra is that out of the body, true self chakra. <clears throat> so these lower three, really important to understand that before we incarnated into these lives, we understood that money was going to be an issue, whether we had a lot of it or none of it or a sliding scale of both, which tends to be what's written in my script for this life. So the root chakra is tribal relationships. It's our tribal beliefs, our tribal foundations, that when you're born, you have no resistance to that stuff. It just goes in, right? Uh, like I was told growing up, well, we are Catholic. And uh, on my father's side of the family, we are Irish and we are German and we are this and we are that. In other words, you're given this identity the second you pop out, right? And they name you and, you know, hopefully you find out astrologically what's going on at some point. You can identify with that even more. 
But in there certainly are the tribal beliefs about money, uh, whether you're a have or a have not. So that's one whole scheme out of there. And you could spend a really good amount of time just working on that stuff. Root chakra is certainly about survival, uh, fight or flight. And you can notice when um, the larder is bare, when the bank account is low, that there is this almost fight or flight instinct that rises in us. At least you can go, okay, this is root chakra. I don't know what I can do about it right now. I'll, maybe later I'll go in and fine tune that. The second chakra, the sacrum, right underneath the navel, is certainly more uh, connected to money as a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I touched on this last week, that money seems like it's a whole bunch of little things, right? I got like two Georges here, right? Um, but it is a whole entire energy field unto itself, money. And the one-on-one -on -one relationship, what is your relationship with money and what is money's relationship with you? Just like you would work on any other relationship in terms of the wounds that come with that, in terms of guilt and shame and blame and blah, 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 blah. All of that's in there too. And even that can be encoded into your sacred contract, your pre-incarnational agreements to heal that stuff, not just for yourself, which would make sense in a one-on-one -on -one thing, but for all of life. Then we have the solar plexus chakra, which is personal power. And that's the area where we have to really identify a word associated with money that I said previously, that it is really confounding, and that word is worth, self-worth, self-esteem, all that stuff gets so entangled with the financial beliefs of the first and second chakras, as well as from our own personal experiences. Like if you've ever had a credit card declined, oh, punch in the gut, you don't really feel that in the second chakra, maybe you do, but that feeling of, oh my God, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And that is a real common denominator that I find with people who are struggling with money. I mean, myself included, I am not putting myself out there as a master financial person, but I do notice I always get what I need. Sooner or later, usually sooner by the grace of the gods, I do get what I need. And I know that there is wisdom to receiving the thing that you need in lieu of maybe the money to get the thing that you need. And if you're doing money spells and all that stuff as well, you can see how convoluted that can get as though <laughs> witchcraft was a, a, an ATM, right? Ask for it, get it. And of course, all that stuff in the past 10, 15 years about law of attraction, man, they really do make it sound like a cosmic ATM. And if you've noticed, it doesn't work that way. So I have said, if it, work the way it's supposed to. I don't know, all of my friends would be millionaires and I'd be right there with them. Um, and it's not. So this is again, not about Mark, how can I make more money using grace? It doesn't work that way. Grace is a divine substance that makes the moment better, that lifts you up, that teaches you, that helps you, that heals you. So before we do the prayer, I just want you to keep that in mind, that your True worth has nothing to do with the amount of money that you have. That is one of the harder ones to do because look what we do to rich people, right? We put them up on pedestals and then we knock them off, right? And look at what we do with people who don't have a lot of money. We pity them, we feel sorry for them or worse. So I would like you to just really take a moment before we go deeper into this to really do the thing that we came here to do which I'm feeling it right now. It really is this thing of coming together to help each other heal. That is, I think, one of the big things in our sacred contracts, that we didn't just come in to heal ourselves. Certainly we're helping to heal humanity as we heal ourselves. But if you're watching the Netflix uh, show Russian Doll, which you really should, oh, should's not a great word, I would re recommend it because a lot of what that uh, thing is about that whole series, and I love her, Natasha Leone, by the way, great last name. Uh, it really is about how we really do need each other. And that's one of these things that this grace thing can do, is we have the opportunity to interact with each other and help each other heal. Cool. So let's take a minute. 
Let's take a sip of coffee. Yes, I still have a major mug. Mm. Let's say a prayer. 